good evening one and all and welcome to the video in this video i want to talk about how i was able to save 34 percent on the cost essentially for the lambda so we essentially perform this exercise called aws lambda power tuning which help which essentially helped us to save thousands of dollars uh, annually uh, by performing some simple tests so i'm going to be talking about aws lambda power tuning and some couple of things that I have essentially learned by watching a lot of AWS reInvent uh, videos. So let's talk about that in this video. All right, so I am on my screen. This is the library uh, called AWS Lambda Power Tuning. But before that, let's understand what's the problem. When developer writes Lambda or application logic or business logic, right, they don't know essentially how much memory to allocate. it. They usually just select randomly like large memory or pretty small memory. So what I'm trying to say is they either over um, uh, allocate or under allocate the resources. How do we know that we allocate the right amount of resources? This exercise helps you to determine, okay, what's the best memory you should use for a Lambda or what's a which setting you should use to save the optimum cost. This is gonna be answered in this question, okay? Oh, sorry, this is gonna be answered in the video. So let's get started. Uh, AWS Lambda Power Tuning is a plugin, so I'm directly gonna start in action, right? Um, so I'm gonna click on deploy here. Um, uh, essentially, I'm on my dev account right now, so hopefully it should, um, so let's go down. I would, I'm gonna sel select on acknowledged and click on deploy. So uh, this will take a couple of minutes, but we gotta be patient. So what's gonna do is it's gonna essentially, uh, if I go to the repository, it's gonna spin up a, a uh, step functions for us. So now all we gotta do to test out is if you see, uh, they have given, uh, you have to put your Lambda ARN. This is the amount of values that you wanna use for memory. And then we are gonna see, okay, where is the best possible match for my code? So it's gonna generate a graph from which we can know, right? So I'll show you all there in action, man. Uh, so let me, uh, yeah, it's still actually provisioning. So yeah, I think it's ready now. I can go to my step function. And another thing I've seen that, you know, when you learn about anything, they don't teach all this in school. It's something when you actually experiment with production data, when you work too close to production, you understand, you realize, and then you, you know, learn these things, which is why I wanna bring these things to you, right? So I'm on my step functions and I'm gonna click on state machine. I think it's still being created, which is why I, oh, now I do see. So as you can see, it's ready. Now start execution. Now here is what you gotta follow. I have a Lambda, all it does is essentially does a put file to AWS S3. It puts the data to the uh, bucket, okay? So I wanna essentially know how much memory do I allocate? Do I just give like 500 MB, 1000 MB? How much I give? I don't know. So this will help me to determine that, right? So I'm gonna come to their GitHub repository. And I'll essentially put this. Uh, and here I'm gonna put the Lambda ARN. So I copy, copy the Lambda ARN. I head over to my step function and where it says the placeholder, I would put my placeholder here. I would start the execution. And now what it's gonna do guys, it's gonna give us the best beautiful graph from which we can say, this is the number that I wanna choose for my Lambda. So it's still happening as you can see, uh, at the end it's gonna generate a very, very beautiful report. Trust me, you would love it. Um, I did not know, I mean, I, I came to learn by watching some reInvent videos. Another video that I, I took a screenshot was, they said that usually if you use ARM processor uh, while creating Lambda ARM uh, uh, based OS, I mean ARM, ARM system based on X84, it's much more faster. That's what they try to claim. Uh, so uh, yeah, so let, let, let's wait for this graph and then understand. Okay, so my graph is ready and I'm gonna click on step output. And here you can see it has given me a uh, a URL which I would try to dump there in the I think I missed something oh yeah I missed an is equal to at the end so now as you can see I can really see the 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 red line is the invocation time the blue line is the cost so as you can see the cost is increasing if you increase the memory right uh, so a sweet point would be around here, around 120 to 256 megabyte. I can use that to get the best. So here you can see the best cost. If you wanna get the best cost, you have to use 128 megabytes of memory. Uh, if you need the best time, you need fast things, use the memory more. Uh, so really it helps you. So, so using this technique, we were able to optimize our Lambda and save 34%. That is roughly around thousands of dollars annually for the company. 
So I wanted to teach you this tutorial because, uh, you know, hardly people know. I mean, a lot of senior developer might know, but juniors don't know. They write the logic, but they don't go in depth, which is why I want to bring this contents to you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed uh, such valuable contents. And if you do enjoy such amazing content, let me know in the comments and I will try to make more and more and more videos for you. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming. See you guys in the next video.